Might have to wheel hoe it a couple times, but I think that might be it. But the only way to find out is to pull back this tarp, see what it looks like. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. It is Friday, February 24th here in South Georgia. And it's starting to feel like spring around here probably still got about two weeks before we really need to get in the high gear with some warm season planting but it won't be long so on today's video we need to pull back the tarp on one of our plots in the dream garden and start getting that plot ready for planting we also need to move our chicken tractor and start working on the plot that they're on currently but before we get into that let's go in the greenhouse here and check on some of our seed starting progress so we've got several trays here going in the greenhouse where our heat mats are keeping the soil in these trays at a cozy 87 and a half degrees right now. Before we take a closer look at those, I'll show you these over here we started a while back. This is some cool season stuff. We're gonna try to squeeze in one more round of cabbage and broccoli and probably another week or two, those puppies there will be ready to transplant. Now back to our tomatoes and peppers here, which is all we've started in here so far. We'll be starting more pretty soon. This is our first tray of tomatoes that we started. All indeterminates here are mostly indeterminates. And those are looking really, really good. I was waiting to start fertilizing these because we had some on the end here that we planted later than the ones at the beginning. But now that they're all up and now that they all have their second set of leaves, we're gonna start fertilizing these every time we water. So we've got our injector set up here so we can feed while we water. And we'll be feeding them with this stuff here, this AgriThrive General Purpose. So what I usually do is put about four to six ounces in that injector tank there. And when I wanna feed those tomatoes or when I wanna water those tomatoes because we'll be feeding them every time we water, I just turn the valves on that injector and it feeds them and waters them at the same time. So today, when I water this tray, I'll feed it too at a low dosage and it'll get a little bit of that AgriThrive every time we water this tray. Now this tray here has peppers in it and we're still waiting on a few of these to germinate. These really hot peppers can test your patience a little bit. The chocolate ghost peppers have came up pretty good. Still waiting on some of these chocolate habaneros, but you can see they're starting to pop through there. So I may hold off another few days before I start fertilizing this tray. Although some of these peppers on this end are starting to look pretty good. They could probably already take a little bit of fertilizer. Now over here, we've got a tray of mostly determinate tomatoes that we planted two weeks after we've planted that first tomato tray. And these are starting to come through there. We've got a red snapper and a roadster looking pretty good, getting pretty good germination on those. Got real good germination on our Edox and Torangina cherry tomatoes. And then our Turkey Creek tomatoes here are coming up too. Got pretty good germination on those as well. And speaking of those Turkey Creek tomatoes, we've had a lot of people asking when those seeds were gonna be available on our website. So when this video airs, they will be live on our website. So we've got them packed right here, 15 seeds per packet, which should be more than a plenty for everyone. Really great tasting, indeterminate tomato variety, really meaty, not a whole lot of gel inside of it, just all delicious tomato. So things are looking good in the greenhouse. It's staying nice and cozy in there on these warm days. Now let's head over to the dream garden and start getting some of these plots ready for some warm season planting. So over here in the dream garden, we've got this plot that has a tarp on it and has had a tarp on it for about a month and a half now. We started out in the fall with a cool season cover crop like you see on that plot behind it. Took our chicken tractor, which is over there now, and let them make three rounds on this plot, eating that cover crop, moving them every single day. Then we mowed it down really close with the lawnmower, and then we put the tarp on it. And this is where sweet corn is gonna be going in just a few weeks. So as far as my spring direct seeding planting schedule goes, the first thing I like to direct seed would be summer squash. And the reason for that is because as it gets hotter, diseases get bad, insects get bad, and 
we can't really grow summer squash during the middle of the summer down here. So we like to get our summer squash in early so we can get some good production before the diseases and the insects get too bad. The second thing I like to plant or direct seed in the spring would be my sweet corn. Have to wait till the soil warms up a little bit for these super sweet varieties we like to plant. But I try to get my sweet corn planted as soon as possible because I don't like to be out here processing, harvesting corn when it's blazing hot. I have to go ahead and get my corn grown out, go ahead and get it in the freezer before the blazing heat of summer arrives. Now I don't expect this plot to need a whole lot of preparation before we can plant sweet corn here in a few weeks. Might have to wheel hoe it a couple times, but I think that might be it. But the only way to find out is to pull back this tarp, see what it looks like. And there we go, that worked just like it's supposed to work. In just about a month and a half, that tarp has terminated that cover crop for us. Now we've still got a little bit of debris from that cover crop left out here, which means we're probably gonna have to do a couple light cultivations with the wheel hoe to get this ready for laying drip tape and planting corn. But what the tarp does is it prevents us from having to till the mess out of this plot to terminate that cover crop. We can terminate it without much soil disturbance. That way, all we have to do is wheel hoe it. We don't have to disturb this plot a whole lot. Now, I don't think this stuff is gonna grow back now that the tarp is on it and it's getting some sun, but just in case it tries to, let's go ahead and wheel hoe it one time. That way we can start getting it ready. All right, now, I ain't gonna lie, that was a pretty decent workout. My arms and my shoulders are on fire right now. Would it have been easier to just go get the tiller and till this as opposed to wheel hoeing it? Yes. Now I don't think it would have been faster. I timed myself, it took me 14 minutes and 58 seconds to wheel hoe this entire 30 by 35 plot. Well, it took me longer than that to go put gas in the tiller, crank it up, roll it over here and till this plot. And hopefully our soil biology in this plot appreciates the fact that we decided to wheel hoe it as opposed to pulverizing it with the tiller. And a little hard work ain't never hurt nobody. Now we probably will need to wheel hoe this plot at least one more time before we start laying drip tape and planting corn here. But the second time will be a lot easier than it was this first time. Took a little work to break through that mat of chicken manure and cover crop debris there. Now that we've got it flipped over some, should be pretty easy going from here. So that's one way to terminate a cover crop with minimal soil disturbance if you've got plenty of time. So it takes some time for the chickens to do their thing and then a month and a half or so to tarp it and then probably another few weeks before we're able to get this ready to plant. But what if you don't have that much time? Let's talk about a little different situation here in this plot behind me. So in this plot, we've got that same overwintering cover crop mix planted that we had on that plot that we just unveiled. And the chickens just finished their first round on this plot. You can see right here where they started. It's regrown very nicely. You can see back over there, kind of the work they do on it when they're sitting on each spot in a given day. Now we don't have near as much time with this plot as we have with that other plot. I'm gonna be needing to plant some peppers here probably early to mid April, assuming our transplants are ready in the greenhouse. I think I've got time for the chickens to graze it one more time, but I definitely don't have time for the tarping period and all that. So we gotta do things a little bit differently. We gotta speed things up a little bit. Now from my experiences with that plot over there, even if we let the chickens graze this one more time, they're not gonna knock it back completely. After a second grazing the whole plot, we'll probably end up looking 
a little something like that right there maybe knock down a little more than that but definitely not ready to plant so we're going to have to help the chickens out a little bit what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and mow this plot scalp it down pretty good and expose a little soil that way when the chickens go over it a second time they can kind of stir it up a little bit and kind of till it for me so i'm going to pull the girls off the corner of this plot where they're sitting right now that way we can mow the entire plot and then we'll kind of circle them back around to the beginning where they can start their second round all right all right all right so we had to go over it two times with the mower first time on the high setting then i dropped it down to about two and a half inches which is what i use for my yard i blew it all that way towards the chicken tractor so you can see just how close we were cutting it there so that's what it looks like when it's not covered in all this goodness that we just chopped up there and the chickens ought to be able to scratch that up pretty good they won't terminate it completely probably still have to use the wheel hoe a little bit but they'll get it close for us and since we scalped the cover crop we will have to start feeding these gals again so we'll supplement with some layer food while they're working over this plot one more time so no more free chicken food for the next 25 days or so but once they get through tilling this for us we'll go back to free chicken food right over here now I'll be the first to admit that over the years I've been pretty skeptical about the doability or feasibility of no-till gardening on a medium scale. And I think that's kind of what we have here. It's not a real small scale. It's not a huge commercial scale. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. Now no-till is pretty much a no-brainer if you have a real small garden, whether it be if you raise beds or a really small in-ground garden plot. Pretty easy to mulch a small area like that. But the larger the garden area you have, the harder it is to use mulch and manage that mulch. And then on the complete opposite end of the spectrum where we have large scale agriculture, they've got big tractors, these big no-till planters, which makes things pretty easy. But somewhere in the middle there, kind of on a medium scale, it's a little harder to do. Now we're slowly learning over the years ways to do no-till in these kind of medium sized plots. Now you can certainly skip the cover crop part and just do compost on top of compost and do no-till that way. But we really value the cover crops around here. We've seen what good things they can do for our soils. So that kind of throws a little kink in things, figuring out ways to terminate cover crops without going in there and just pulverizing the soil so much. So I hope you've enjoyed the journey thus far and I hope you enjoy seeing the different ways we manage all of these plots out here in the dream garden obviously there's not a one size fits all solution for everybody but hopefully seeing the different ways we can do things seeing the different ways we can grow and terminate cover crops gives you some ideas for what you can do on your homestead or in your backyard garden and as always you can find links in the description below to all our affiliate partners including that agrothrive fertilizer i showed you earlier and these ollie garden raised beds behind me got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts don't forget to go check out our website lazydogfarm.com where you can find those turkey creek tomato seeds we've got our fig trees for sale there our garden blog recipes all kind of good stuff over there if you did enjoy the video be sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm oh well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.